Hi, this is Monica Reinagel, and you're listening to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the popular Whole30 Nutrition Challenge, along with some other ways that you might go about upgrading your nutrition. Support for the Nutrition Diva podcast comes from Third Love, the lingerie brand that uses real women's measurements to design better fitting bras. Did you know that 80% of women are actually wearing the wrong size bra? At Third Love, it takes just 30 seconds to answer a few questions to find the perfect fitting bra for you, all from the comfort of your home. Third Love also stands behind their product. You can try one for free for 30 days. Just pay upfront for shipping and returns, and exchanges are always free and easy. Visit thirdlove.com slash diva to get started. I've gotten a lot of questions and emails about the Whole30 diet, including one from Jasmine, who wrote... I've recently been researching the Whole30 Diet promoted by Melissa Hartwig. I've been reading her book and I was getting really excited until I saw that the diet was ranked 38th out of 38 in U.S. News & World Report's annual diet ranking. I have found your balanced, real-world, science-based approach to nutrition to be a breath of fresh air in the often murky waters of fad diets, and I trust your opinion. So what do you think? Is the Whole30 healthy or harmful? Well, first, Jasmine, I want to thank you for those kind words. Your trust really means a lot to me. And I think the Whole30 is a little bit of a mixed bag. Now, for those who may not be familiar with it, the Whole30 is a popular 30-day nutrition challenge that was created by Doug and Melissa Hartwig, and they promote it on their website, which is whole30.com, and through several best-selling books. The Whole30 is described as a whole foods approach. But the challenge is not just to eliminate processed and packaged foods from your life for 30 days. You're also instructed to avoid beans and legumes, dairy products, sugar, including natural sweeteners like honey, maple syrup, alcohol, all grains, and starchy vegetables like potatoes. Moreover, it's not just about cutting down or reducing these foods, but about completely eliminating them from your diet for 30 days. The Hartwigs promise that this will yield all kinds of amazing health benefits, including restoring a healthy metabolism, reducing systemic inflammation, healing your digestive tract, and balancing your immune system. Evidence that this program produces those benefits is anecdotal. Other promised benefits are more psychological or behavioral. The program is said to act as a nutritional reset designed to help you put an end to unhealthy cravings and habits. This program is definitely disruptive, and that is part of its power. A period of radical abstinence might serve to disrupt unhealthy habits, shaking you out of your established patterns and forcing you to find alternatives. If a glass or two of wine has become a daily routine, for example, committing to going without for 30 days might compel you to find some new ways to decompress after work. Maybe you end up replacing happy hour with a walk in the park with a friend. And also, I do not doubt that restricting your diet this dramatically is going to change how you think about and experience food. Now, other forms of disruption may not be quite as welcome. Doing the Whole30 requires a good deal of planning. Shopping and meal preparation take up a lot of time because you'll need to make all of your food from scratch. Eating in restaurants is challenging, to say the least. And just pray that no business trips, family birthdays, or head colds come up during your 30 days. If you can recruit your entire family, office, church, and book club to join you for your 30 days, that's going to make your life a lot easier. Otherwise, you may find socializing a bit tricky during your challenge. None of this is insurmountable. In fact, some people really love a challenge. Take marathon runners, for example, or triathletes. They are willing to sacrifice enormous amounts of time to train for their goal, and accomplishing great feats of physical strength and mental toughness makes them feel like a million bucks. But do you have to complete a marathon in order to get fit? Of course not. You can get into pretty good shape training for a 5k and you're also less likely to suffer an injury that relegates you to the couch for six weeks. And by the same token, I understand that some people are attracted to the austerity and the purity of the Whole30 challenge. 
but I simply do not agree that your diet has to be this restrictive in order to be healthful or to deliver the kinds of benefits that the Whole30 promises. In fact, one of the main reasons that the nutrition experts who evaluated diets for U.S. News & World Report gave the Whole30 such a low ranking was out of concern that the diet was overly and unnecessarily restrictive, eliminating entire categories of nutritious foods. I also worry about the sustainability of such an extreme approach. I have some more thoughts on that, but first, additional support for today's Nutrition Diva podcast comes from HelloFresh. Whether you're a busy professional couple, a large family that runs at breakneck pace, or somebody who simply wants to start cooking more, HelloFresh makes it easier, tastier, and healthier than ever to cook and eat together at home. HelloFresh curates great recipes that anyone can ace in about 30 minutes, then they do all the grocery shopping and even pre-measure your ingredients and deliver it all to your door. All that's left for you to do is the fun part. You can order three, four, or five meals a week for either two or four people. I really enjoyed the vegetarian recipes I tried. They were good enough to serve for company, and the portions were so plentiful that we had leftovers for lunch. They've also got two full-time registered dietitians on staff who review every recipe to ensure that it is nutritionally balanced. For $35 off your first week of deliveries, visit HelloFresh.com and enter Diva35 when you subscribe. That's HelloFresh.com and the promo code is Diva35 to save 35 bucks. So how sustainable is this Whole30 approach? Let's say you make it through your 30 days without any grains, dairy, alcohol, sugar, and all the rest. You have definitely earned some bragging rights. But now what? Well, some celebrate day 31 by going out for pizza and beer, and I can't say I blame them. I think most Whole30 graduates start out determined to hang on to their healthy new eating habits, or at least most of them, or at least most of the time. But without the structure of a 30-day all-or-nothing challenge, many of them end up gradually, ever so gradually, sliding back into their previous eating habits. And perhaps that's why so many people find it necessary to repeat the Whole30 reset once or twice a year. You know, one sure sign that my modem has reached the end of its lifespan is when it gets to the point that I have to reboot it several times a day. Maybe a dietary approach that requires a hard reset every few months is similarly in need of replacement. You've heard me say this before, I would rather have you reduce your sugar consumption by 20% forever than cut it out completely for 30 days and then fall off the wagon. And the same goes for other incremental improvements you could make. Not only will you get more health benefit from a small but sustained change than you would from a dramatic but short-lived one, but it might also be more beneficial from a psychological and a behavioral standpoint as well. Taking a more forgiving and flexible approach to eating well means that it's something that you can sustain through a variety of circumstances, not something that falls apart the minute you have to travel on business, or you go on vacation, or you come down with the flu, or you have a birthday. It's not a bandwagon that you get on for a few weeks and then fall off for eight months. It's more of a winding path that you travel every day, despite the inevitable potholes or flat tires. If you hit a hill, you might slow down or even stop and rest, but you don't have to abandon the trip altogether. In fact, this is the idea behind the 30-Day Nutrition Upgrade Program that I launched a couple of years ago as a more sustainable and realistic alternative to programs like the Whole30. In fact, we have several Whole30 alumni in the group. There are no forbidden foods on the 30-Day Nutrition Upgrade, no do-or-die rules, just a proven method for changing your eating habits for the better and for good. If you do decide to do the Whole30 Challenge, Jasmine, I wish you a successful experience. Perhaps it's just the reset that you need. Maybe it will result in a new level of wellness. And I truly hope that you'll be able to transition gracefully into a more relaxed but still healthful eating style when it's over. If, on the other hand, the 30-day nutrition upgrade sounds more your speed, we actually have a new group launching in just a few days on March 13th. I'd love to have you join us. You can learn more on my website at nutritionovereasy.com. 
It's always so much fun. And those who did the first challenge two years ago are still reporting benefits. You'll find a transcript of today's show along with the entire Nutrition Diva archives at quickanddirtytips.com. And you can always find me on Facebook and Twitter at Nutrition Diva. Thanks so much for listening today. Have a great week.